Well, I'm here. Sully's here. Scout is roaming around behind the computer. That was her tail right there. So I guess we're ready. Uh, today we're going to talk. Thank you, Scout. Today we're going to talk about the Industrial Revolution and agriculture, which agriculture we know is the growing of crops or animals to provide food for people and probably other animals. And let me share my screen here with my mad skills. Thank you for that. Yes, that's very helpful. And we'll start from right there. Okay. When agriculture first develops, it is generally one person who is involved in growing food for his own family and it pretty much takes all summer all spring to grow the crops and all summer spring and summer to grow the crops and then harvest them and then they have to store them over the winter and the object was to do to get enough food to not starve to death during the winter because there weren't grocery stores where you could go and uh, purchase food for you or your family if you didn't have it and grow it if your neighbor didn't happen to have anything and it was a really bad winter you could starve to death and not a good thing so generally wooden plows were used at first at first the people just had to drag them with their their own hands and then they figured out how to attach them by a harness to a horse and the horse could drag the wooden plow wooden plows were not great because thanks there scout they're not horribly strong they um break easily they rot over a period of time they they, they deteriorate and they become less effective after that after they got the, the furrow plowed which is what you call that that uh, trough that you dig into the dirt and then you plant the seeds in the farmer would have to plant the seeds pretty much by hand either he would just broadcast them or he would have to drop them one by one into the furrow uh, when the plants grew the farmer would harvest them using a scythe sorry this is a sickle a sickle is on a short handle that you have to get way down close to the ground to to harvest so you have to you know be bent down onto the ground it slows down your progress or a scythe a scythe is the weapon that you sometimes if you've seen pictures of the grim reaper the, that's the the hard the thing that he carries the long handle with the knife blade on the end that is a scythe that meant you could harvest the crops without having to bend down it's because it's got a long handle and you can get down close to the ground but then you have to go back and pick all of the stuff up that you've harvested that you've cut by hand and transport it maybe by a wagon to the barn this is a time consuming process and if the weather goes wrong still if the weather goes wrong you don't have a crop so in 1700 a man named jethro tull in, in england invented what was called the seed drill and this was a sort of a plow but um it dug the furrows more quickly and it allowed the seeds to be sown more efficiently now we know that there is a band from the 70s and 80s called Jethro Tull, not that guy. It's named after him, but it's not him. In 1755, a man named Robert Bakewell in England began looking at <coughs> animals and thinking, you know what? This sheep has better wool than that one over there. These two have better wool. What if I breed these two and maybe I get a whole bunch of sheep with better wool? And he began working on what's called selective breeding. This is choosing the, um, the traits that you want to have in an animal and trying to get rid of the traits that you don't want to have. So he originated the breed called the Lester long wool sheep. And it had much more wool than the average sheep had at that point. 
So um, it produced much more wool. So it was a, a very desirable animal to have because for sheep, what you want them mostly for is for the wool. Some of them were killed for the, the meat, but mostly sheep you keep for wool because you know you can harvest that from year to year to year and you, you don't need to get new sheep all the time. In 1758, we have the... Scout, you okay there? She fell over. Oh, well. She seems to be okay. She's clumsy. We have the invention of the threshing machine. This one's invented in Scotland by a man named Andrew Michael. It was much more efficient from moving the chaff from the grain. Now, the chaff is the covering of the seed, and you have to take that off so that then you can grind the seed into, you were talking about wheat usually, grind the wheat into flour, and then it's used to make bread. If you leave that chaff on there, it's not digestible. It uh, creates a problem with making the flour. It's something you don't want. You have to want that off of there. So you can see that they would feed the wheat into this machine here. It would kind of scrubble it around and take the chaff off. And then it would allow you to package up the wheat seeds or kernels and send those. So you can see the chaff falls down here and the, the seeds fall down here. Um, before this, you would have to have like a floor on your barn. You would throw all of the wheat seeds, the wheat kernels down, the wheat stalks, sorry, down, and you'd have to beat them with what they called flails. And that's how you would get separate the kernels from the chaff. And it took a long time and a lot of manpower to do. In 1769, Robert Blakewell decided that he would work on cows next. And he invented the longhorn cow. Now, this is not the longhorn that those of us from Texas are used to seeing. You can see this is a different cow altogether. But this was a beef cow that produced much more meat. It was much heavier. It was much more muscular than the average cow. And it um, was desirable because of that. Eventually, they would go back in and decide, you know, we don't want these things to have these horns like this. So they would go back in and they would take these, these longhorn cattle and breed them down to get shorter horns, but still maintain the amount of beef that they had, which tends to be what we see as beef cattle now. In 1770, potatoes were introduced. They were brought over from South America and eventually made their way into England. And they provided an alternative food source to bread. Um, this was particularly useful for people who were poor. We know that the potato took hold and was grown a lot in Ireland. And it was then, you know, fed to poor people who now we have potatoes, so we don't have to have bread. We don't have to bake bread. We just eat these potatoes instead. In 1772, a man named Thomas Koch began experimenting with breeding undesirable traits and desirable traits into and out of animals on a larger scale. Uh, we know that Bakewell had played around with this some and done some one particular breed of sheep and one particular breed of cattle, Thomas Cook starts looking at, you know, let's look at all of the breeds and see what we can do about that. In 1784, the iron plow was invented. Now, this was invented by a man named Charles Newbold. He was actually in Burlington County in New Jersey in the United States. This was much more effective than wooden plows, but this was made out of cast iron. Now, a lot of you have probably seen cast iron skillets that you're either your mom or maybe your grandmother, my grandmother had one, um, that are black and they're very heavy and they're really good to cook in as long as you keep them oiled and seasoned. Now, with the plow, the problem was the cast iron plow dirt stuck to it. And so you're plowing along and every little while you have to stop and clean the plow off so that it will continue to plow. It's more effective than a wooden plow, but there's still a lot of problems with it. In 1809, 
a man named Nicolas Appert, I think that's how you pronounce that, in France, um, responded to a call by the government in France that wanted a means of preserving food for the army and navy to use. Because, you know, they, they march for a long way or they're on ships for a long time. They need to have access to food that is edible but doesn't have to be fresh. So he came up with this process for sealing food into an airtight container and then sterilizing it using heat. And that's the canning preservation process. Uh, we also have people that still do canning at home. They don't use these cans. They use those jars with the lids that you screw on. But it's the same basic process. You fill that up and then you um, heat it so that the heat um, seals the, the lid and that hopefully sterilizes what's inside there. In 1831, we have the mechanical reaper. Reaping is when you harvest, so you're cutting the grain and bringing it in. Cyrus McCormick invented this reaper when he was 22 years old. It was pulled by horses and it had a platform to catch the cut grain. So it has a, a a blade that vibrates as you're going, pulling the horses, driving the horses and pulling this reaper over a, a stand of grain. It vibrates and cuts the grain. The grain falls backward onto this um, platform. And when you get to the end of the row or whenever you get to where it is that's full, you stop, you unload that, put it into a wagon or put it into whatever you're using to store it and you don't have to go back into the field and pick it up by hand. In 1837, John Deere invented the steel plow. This was much more efficient than the cast iron plow because dirt didn't stick to it. It's still pulled by horses. It still only does one furrow at a time, but you don't have to stop every few minutes and clean it off. You just keep plowing. So it speeds things up considerably. Hello, Scout. In 1845, the first of the Irish potato famines hit. Now, potatoes at this point were the main source of food for the poor people in Ireland. And when this, this disease struck these potatoes, they would rot in the ground and become inedible. You can see that's yeah, a nasty looking potato. These are nasty looking potatoes. You don't want to eat those. This meant that the people had no food basically. And so this starts giving rise to large waves of migration out of Ireland, particularly going to the United States. In 1873, a man named Louis Pasteur in France came up with the pasteurization method, which involved sterilizing milk by heating it up and then cooling it back down. And now that has killed a lot of the germs that are in it. And it also allows it to be preserved a little bit longer. So it doesn't go bad quite as fast. In 1879, a lady named Anna Baldwin of New Jersey invented the milking machine. This used suction to attach onto the udders of the cows and kind of slurp the milk out instead of a person having to go and squeeze the milk out. So if you have one person who has five cows and they have these milking machines, they can milk all five cows at the same time instead of having to take a bucket and a stool and sit and milk one cow and then go to the next cow and milk that cow. It cuts down the amount of time involved in this in a huge manner. In 1892, the first tractor was invented. It was invented by a man named John, F I think that's Froelich, in Clayton County, Iowa. It was a very basic tractor at this point. It um, had a gasoline engine, and so it could maneuver forward and backward. But that's pretty much all that it did. Uh, but it was the beginning of the tractors that we have now. In 1895, a man named Carl von Lind, who lived in Bavaria, which is now part of Germany, invented the process of refrigeration using liquefied compressed ammonia. This increased the ability to preserve food on a drastic scale. Before this, people had been able to preserve food 
some places because what they had were called ice boxes. And it was literally a wooden box that had a place for you to put ice all the way around the food and keep it, it cool. Kind of like what we have uh, with coolers or um, ice chests now. That's what they had. The problem is if you live in like South Texas, we don't have a lot of ice just sitting around. So that's gonna be really difficult for us to, to work with. This situation, the refrigeration using a compressed gas, that is a game changer that can be used worldwide. All right, and that is the end of that. Uh, the development of refrigeration is considered pretty much to be the end of the agriculture, the industrial revolution in agriculture, because everything after that just kind of builds on the inventions that have already been done. So that's all I have for you today. Thank you for joining me. I hope to see you next time. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the, in the comment section. And um, I guess that's it. We're done, Sully.